any of the attorneys questioning you. With that in mind, then, Ms. Rawlings, if you'd like to inquire, you may. Thank you, Your Honor. Good morning, Audrey. Good morning. Would you please state your name and spell your last name for the record? My name is Audrey Baratero, A-U-D-R-E-Y-B-A-R-A-T-T-I-E-R-O. And what city and state do you reside in? Gallatin, Missouri. Okay. Have you heard the name Lori Vallow? Yes. How do you know Lori Vallow? She was a friend. And how did you first meet her? I attended a conference, um, well, the end of a conference in November 2018, and her home was offered as a place where people could stay. So that conference, I think you said, was approximately when? November 2018. Okay. And you stayed in her home during the conference? At the end of the conference, yes. Um, do you recall who else stayed at Lori's house? Um, I think Zulema, Melanie Gibb, and there was others, um, and Chad Daybell was there. Okay. Do you recall where Chad Daybell slept while he was at the residence? He slept on the other side of the home. Okay. Were you able to observe Lori and Chad together during that time? Yes and no. I observed that every once in a while they looked at each other or there was like just a, I don't know, kind of a vibe. A vibe. Mm -hmm. So your observations with how they interacted, uh, can you expound a little bit more on that vibe? Um, did they seem flirtatious? Did they seem like they knew each other? Did they seem... They didn't seem fl flirtatious, but it seemed like maybe they knew each other a little bit or something. Okay. And were you aware if they had met previously? I think that they met in St. George. Okay. Uh, when did you next have contact with Lori? I believe in February, so about three months later or, okay. or so, and um, Chad asked me to be her friend. Okay. So I was going to ask you how that occurred. Can you just explain a little bit how Chad asked you? He asked me to be her friend okay. um, and that she needed a friend, and I said, okay. Did he say why she needed a friend? He said that he couldn't talk to her all the time and that maybe I could be someone to, like, uplift her or, you know, be a friend. Okay. And you mentioned this occurred in February. Would have that have been the February of the next year? Yes, 2019. Okay. And when you talked with Chad, how were you talking with Chad? I was talking with him on the phone. Okay. So he asked you this over the phone about Yes. Him. Okay. And how, ad, how often would you say that you talked with Lori on the phone after that? Usually it was every few weeks, but there was times that it was every couple weeks or a week, but for the most part, every few weeks. Did you get to know each other over the phone? Somewhat. We talked about more so spiritual things, um, not as much things going on in personal life stuff. Okay. And when did you next see Lori in person? In the summertime. Okay. Of 2019. Same, summertime in 2019. Um, what kind of event were you attending at that time? There was a event that was scriptural based and uh, somewhere in Utah, um, Utah Valley, and uh, I went to that. Okay. And I just want to back up a little bit. Um, I think you said that uh, Chad asked you to be Lori's friend because he couldn't talk to her all the time. Do you know what that meant? My impression was that he was trying to keep propriety um, because he was married. Okay. And this conference that you saw Laureate next, you said it was in the summertime. Where was that conference held? I'm sorry, can you say that again? 
Where the conference that you attended in the summertime? Mm -hmm. Where was it held? It was held in Utah somewhere in the Salt Lake Valley. Okay. And where were you living at the time of that conference in the summer? Do you remember what month it was? I don't, but I would guess that it was in June or July. Okay. And and where were you living at that time? I was living in Utah. Okay. So you attend you lived in Utah and you attended a conference in the same state. Is that yes. Right? Okay. Yes. And um, do you know where Lori stayed when she attended that conference? In a hotel. Okay. Uh, did you spend any time with Lori? Yes. Do you recall who else uh, visited with her and you? Um, Zulema was there and Melanie Gibb, and there was some other women that I didn't know. And what did Lori talk about at that time? I don't remember what was talked about, um, but at the end of being there, um, she brought up wanting to work on her husband at the time. Okay. And do you know who her husband at the time was? Charles. At some point, did you go back to her hotel room? Yes, that's where she brought it up. Okay. So when you say that she wanted to work on her husband, Charles, what does that mean? Um, well, um, do you want me to back up a little bit? And sure. So at some time close to that time, um, when I had seen her again after not seeing her for a long time, she all of a sudden, out of the blue, brought up all of this stuff about zombies and people being possessed is kind of the idea of that. And um, I hadn't heard of that before and had no basis for that. And that's why she brought that up in the hotel room because that was something she was doing herself. So let's just break that down a little bit to make okay. it a little more clear. So you mentioned that sometime before this she was talking about zombies and people being possessed. Yes. How was she talking to you about that? On the phone. Okay. I hadn't talked to her in like three weeks. And all of a sudden she brought up all of this things she had learned. And it came out of the middle of nowhere. Um, and then she asked my thoughts about it and I said I didn't have a basis for it and that it made me feel uncomfortable but she was basically alluding to people the term I guess that eventually she called it was zombies and that it was people being possessed or having a spirit like connected to them or something okay and was the spirit good or bad, or light, bad. or dark? It was supposed to be bad. Okay. So you first heard about this on the phone, mm -hmm. and then when you were at the conference in the summer, she brought it up again? She brought it up again, yes, in the, in the hotel, hotel when uh, the women were there. Okay. And so when you're at the hotel and you're talking about this, what else happened in the hotel room? Um, people were just like, kind of chatting and... I, I, you know, just small talk kind of a thing. And then she brought up saying that she wanted to, like, work on trying to get a, a negative spirit out of Charles. Okay. And, um, but actually, I should say, at first it was just like everyone started holding hands, and I didn't know what they were doing. And I thought maybe there was going to be like a group prayer or something. And so they all held hands and I joined hands as well, thinking it was going to be a prayer. And then she started talking um, basically to say that she was going to try to get a spirit out of Charles. And each woman would say something and okay. then... So what do you recall Lori saying? I don't remember exact words, but things like knives and f 
fire and like weapons that you would try to use to that kind of an idea. Okay. And when you were holding hands with this woman, were you standing, sitting? How were you guys sitting? Sitting, sitting in the room. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was the first interaction that you had with this circle or this casting or this work. Yes, and I didn't know that term of castings. And um, when it got to me, I didn't feel comfortable and didn't say anything. And then as soon as that was over, I left. Okay. Because I, I didn't want to say. Okay. <clears throat> After this uh, interaction in person with Lori, did your acquaintance, acquaintance or friendship with Lori continue? Yes, it did. How did you communicate? On the phone. Okay. And were you communi- communicating with Chad Daybell during this time as well? Yes. Now, how did you meet Chad? I met him in a event in St. George. I had never heard of him before. And he was a speaker and wrote books. And someone said, oh, you should go and hear him speak. So I did. And then I bought a couple books. Okay. And do you know what Chad did for a living? He was a speaker and an author. He wrote books. Um, How many books of his have you read? Three. Okay. At some point, did you have contact with him about his books? Yes. um, About two months after I had seen him at that time in St. George in 2018, he reached out to me on Facebook um, to open up communication. And at that time, I asked him some questions I had about his books. Okay. So who initiated the contact? He did. And that was on? Facebook. Facebook, okay. Um, how would you communicate with him after that? On the phone. On the phone. Did you continue to communicate on Facebook or was it just on the phone? Just on the phone. Okay. And what kinds of things would you talk about with Chad? Religious things. Okay. Um, and you were continuing to talk with Lori? Yes, uh, about a month and a half or so after he started a conversation, and then he asked me to be friends with her. Okay. Um, once you started talking with Lori, I think you said February 2019? Yes. What would you talk about with her? About, like, religious things or spiritual experiences. Okay. Do you recall uh, talking to Lori about her move to Rexburg? Yes. And do you know where Chad was living at the time? He was living in Rexburg. Uh, Do you recall talking to Lori in late August or September 2019 about her daughter, Tylee? Yes, there was a few times in the fall that I asked her how her daughter was doing. Uh, When I stayed at her house in November 2018, I met her daughter for a few minutes, and so in the fall of 2019, (laughs) um, I asked every once in a while, like, how is Tylee doing? Because she was at college, and towards the end of the friendship, um, when I asked her how she doing at BYU, she said, that she doesn't talk to me very much these days. Okay. So I think you mentioned you had met Tylee initially at that uh, Arizona conference. Yes. Okay. Did you ever meet JJ? Yes, for about five minutes, yeah. Okay. Did you ever have the opportunity to meet Tammy Daydell? Yes, I did once. And how did that occur? Um, I happened to just be going to Idaho and um, Tammy and Garth uh, and Chad wanted to go to dinner. And Garth is uh, one of Chad's sons. And so we went to dinner, and I liked her very much. And do you know who Tammy was married to at the time that you met her? She was married to Chad. Did Chad ever say anything to you about Tammy? Yes, uh, during the course of the friendship, he said that he had had a near-death experience years before and that he had been told by a deceased relative 
that Tammy would pass away before she turned 50. Do you recall when he told you this? I would say around the end of January 2019 or in February 2019. Okay. And at some point, did he indicate to you that he felt he would get married again? Yes, he did. Did he tell you who he would marry? He didn't tell me for a while, uh, but then eventually he said Lori. Okay. And did he discuss this with you prior to Tammy's death? Yes. What were your observations regarding that? What do you mean? What did you say to him? What did you... I asked that? him if he had talked to Tammy or and or his children about it, and he indicated that he had talked to Tammy for sure, and I don't remember about the children. Okay. Now, you mentioned when you talked on the phone with Chad and Laura, you talked about religious stuff, spiritual stuff. Did they talk about other spiritual or re religious teachings with you, besides what we've already kind of covered? Yes. Did they talk to you about prior lives or probations that Lori and he had? Yes. What do you remember about that? He said that he had been Methuselah, and he said that he had been an apostle at the time of Jesus Christ, James. Okay. And do you recall if Lori and Chad indicated a belief that they had been married in previous lives? Yes. Do you know what names they claimed to have in that prior life? I don't remember about the time when he said he was Methuselah. I remember that she was somehow around, according to them at that time. But I remember that he said, he indicated that they'd been married at that time when he said that he was an apostle. And he said he was who? James. And do you recall who he said um, Lori was? His wife. And he said her name was El Elena. Elena or Elena? Elena. Okay. Um, at some point, did you move away from Utah? Yes, I did. Where did you move to? I moved to Missouri. Okay. Did Lori come and visit you in Missouri? She did. She and her niece, Melanie Boudreaux, said they didn't have anything else to do and asked if they could come and see the church historical sites in Missouri. They had never seen them. Okay. Do you remember when that was? October 2019. Do you remember if it was the first part of October or uh, later? The first part? Okay. And you mentioned that Melanie, her niece, was with her. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Was anyone else with her? No. Did you ever see Tylee with her in Missouri? I did not. Um, you mentioned that the reason for their visit was to see some of the church sites. Yes. They said that they had some free time and wanted to go see the church sites. They'd never seen them before. Um, did you visit with them at that time? I did. Where did you guys visit? We went to a place called Adam and Diamond and um, to the temple, and uh, they went to Liberty Jail. Okay. <clears throat> At some point, did you also go back to their hotel room? I did. Did you stay there with them? I did stay there one night, yes. Okay. Now I want to talk to you a little bit more about this experience that you had in the conference in the summer in the hotel room. Mm -hmm. That was, I think, the first time you'd heard about this idea of zombies and people being possessed. Is that right? Yes. And um, do you remember when you first heard Lori use the term zombie? I don't, but it would have been in the summertime. Okay. And do you know what it meant when she was explaining this if someone was a zombie? Yes. Um, the idea was that the person was possessed and that there was a spirit in them that needed to be taken out. Did you ever discuss with Lori or Chad whether someone was light or dark? Yes. Um, what Ch did that mean? Chad, um, Chad had this idea that, I guess, like he would say if someone was light or dark, depending on if like they were predominantly a good person or if he predominantly thought that they were a negative person. Okay. 
did you discuss with Lori people that she believed were dark or were zombies? Yes. And who were those people? She said her husband Charles was, and then um, later at the end of the friendship, she said that her children were. Anyone else? And Tammy. Okay. Yes. And so her children, can you just give me their names again? Tylee and JJ. So these included Charles, Tylee, JJ, and Tammy. Is yes. that right? Was there anyone else that she, she talked about being dark? Uh, yes. Um, Melanie Boudreaux, one or two of her children. Okay. Now I'm going to go back to when you visited with her and Lori at the hotel room in Missouri. Um, what happened there? They invited me to stay in their hotel room instead of driving back to my house, which was a distance away. And um, it was going great. And then um, basically she brought up the idea of working on Tammy. Okay. And again, when you say working on, what did you guys do? She said that Tammy had um, a spirit that was in her and needed to be taken out. And I told her I did not want to help and that I did not want to participate. And she Okay, if you need to get some water. She highly pressured me, saying, you're supposed to be my friend, you're supposed to help me. Like, Chad asked you to be my friend. And I reiterated that I didn't want to. And she kept on. And this was later in the night. And I didn't know. I... I didn't do those things in my own life. And I said that I would say a prayer. And basically, I said a prayer to Heavenly Father saying, okay, I don't know what's going on. If there is something going on with Tammy and it needs to be taken out, I ask for thee to help her. For thy angels to help her. And I asked that she would be able to feel the love of God. And into the prayer. Okay. And were you holding hands with Lori and Melanie during this no. circle? No. Okay. Um, do you remember what other people were doing besides you during this circle? They were standing or sitting. Okay. Did Lori say anything about what needed to happen to this spirit that was in Tammy? That it needed to be out. Okay. At that time, I'd never heard it before. It was, again, at the end of the friendship, because I dissolved the friendship. But basically, at that time, Chad brought up an idea that, according to him, that if the spirit was in someone's body, that they were somehow being held prisoner. And like an idea of a cage or something, okay. like jail. And so the first time you participated in something like this was in the summertime in Utah. Is that right? Yes. And then, and who was that for? That was for Charles. And do you recall when Charles died? I was traveling in Europe for about a month, and uh, that was in July. So it would have been July 2019. Okay. And um, after doing this other work in Missouri on Tammy, um, do you recall ever hearing Lori express frustration or have an explanation for why someone might have remained dark or why they were doing this multiple times? Yes, she, it's like if it didn't work, at least to me, it seemed like if it didn't work, it's like came, like she came up with a new idea, like it didn't work because of this, or 
um, it just seemed like it was like, oh, it's because of this, and then, oh, there's this other thing, and then, oh, and that, oh, it was another spirit that got in, and, and it just seemed like it, I, I don't know, <laughs> would just keep going and going and going. Do you recall receiving a text from Lori saying something along the lines of, well, we did a lot of work today, we got her out, but a new one got in, we're still working on it. Audrey, any ideas you have would be greatly appreciated. I didn't remember, but I, I do know, yes. Do you know what that was referencing? I believe it would have been re referencing Tammy and the idea that she was saying, there were spirits that kept, like like I mentioned a minute ago, like, oh, it didn't work. So she, then she would say, oh, another one got in and okay. with what they were doing. <laughs> yeah. Um, why would Lori have been asking you for ideas or guidance? I, I don't know. Did you have any special knowledge or insight? No. When Lori and Melanie visited in you, you in Missouri, did you do any other work other than on Tammy? No. And where did Lori say Tammy's spirit was? She was saying that she was in a cage or a jail or something like this. And it was the idea of, like, she needs to be freed and held because some person's overtaken her body. Okay. And so she wasn't in her body anymore. Sorry. According to them. According to Lori. And do you know what would happen if this dark spirit was pushed out? At the end of the friendship, when I heard Chad Daybell say, something to the effect of, why is the body still alive or something like that? Okay. I realized that they must have a different idea. Okay. Even further. Even further. And what did that mean? That they didn't want, that they didn't intend for the person to be helped, I would think. Um, that they didn't want the person to live. And after you visited with Lori and Melanie in Missouri, did you take a trip later in October? Yes. Where did you go? To Hawaii. And do you recall about when that was? Toward the latter end of October 2019. Okay. Do you recall who picked you up at the airport? Melanie and Lori. And where did you stay? In a hotel. Who was at the hotel with you? Lori and Melanie. What do you recall about your stay in Hawaii? It was very uncomfortable. Um, basically, they invited me saying that Melanie was going through a hard time and that she needed a friend. And I said, I could be a friend. And when I got there, shortly after getting there, Lori told me that Tammy had passed away, and I didn't know. I asked her when, and she said I'd been about a week. <laughs> I asked her, how did she pass away? And she said in her sleep. Um, do you recall what, el what there are other kinds of things you were doing in Hawaii while you were there? We went on a bike ride and most of the time spent time at the beach. Okay. 
And what did you observe about Lori's behavior while you were in Hawaii? She was seemed agitated and snippy toward Melanie and just different emotions. Um, other times she would like swing and be um, like happy and but overall it, uh, her behavior seemed different. I had not seen her behavior like that. I hadn't seen her much in person but she had been nice and very I don't know. You, but in, at that time, she seemed agitated or, like I said, snippy. Okay. Um, and now when Chad had asked you to be friends with her because he couldn't talk to her all the time, uh, did you notice anything about her behavior that was related to, to Chad? Um. There was times that she would get phone calls and she would leave and go talk and be gone for a long time. And I would just be sitting with Melanie, trying to keep her company. And um, times when she was happy, it was, seemed like she was thinking about him or I think had talked to him on the phone. And did you personally talk to Chad while you were in Hawaii? Yes. Okay. And you mentioned that you heard about Tammy's death while you were there. Yes. And you heard that from Lori. Yes. When did Lori leave Hawaii? She left Hawaii on Wednesday. I had said that I was going to go home. I didn't tell them this, but I didn't feel comfortable. And I was going to go home. And when I said that I was going to go home, um, they said, but you just got here. And then Lori said that she was going to leave. And Melanie said that she wasn't ready to go home yet, um, but that she didn't want to be alone. So when Lori said that she was going to be leaving, then I said, well, I could stay with Melanie so she won't be alone. And so did Lori leave before you and Melanie did? She did. Okay. And do you know if that was planned? My impression is that the ticket was bought like the same day. Okay. Do you know where she left, uh, where she went when she left Hawaii? She said she was going back to Idaho. Okay. When did you leave Hawaii? On Sunday that week. Okay. And where did you decide to go when you left? Again, I wanted to ideally go home, but I didn't want Melanie to be alone because she was going through a hard time. So I told her that I would fly with her there. And when you say there? Sorry, Idaho. Okay. And because I was going there so that she wasn't alone, that I would pay my condolences in person to Garth. Because I... <laughs> I knew that he'd been very close to his mom. And then also to pay my condolences to Chad. And so that's why you decided to visit Idaho? Yes. Where did you stay while you were in Idaho? In Lori's condo. And when you were there, did you observe Lori and Chad together? I did. How did they act towards each other? Very romantic. Did they physically touch each other? Yes. What did you observe? They were kissing and hugging. And was that just in the residence or was there anywhere else that you observed this? I observed it in the residence. Okay. And do you recall who else was in Lori's residence in Rexburg when you stayed there? Melanie stayed in one of the rooms. Okay. Yes. Was there anyone else there? No. Did you see Chad in the residence? At times, yes. Okay. Do you know if he slept in the residence? 
Sometimes he came back later at night, and so I didn't see him come back. But other times I did, and yes, he did stay. Okay. And while you were in Rexburg, did you go anywhere? Yes, we went to the temple. Okay. Who was with you when you went to the Rexburg temple? Chad and Lori and Melanie. Your Honor, may I have just one moment? Yes. Your Honor, I don't have any questions at this time. All right. Thank you, Ms. Rawlings. Thank you. Who will be conducting cross? All right, Mr. Archibald. Thank you. Please be seated. Mr. Bailiff, we could have the jurors brought in, please. All right, thank you, Mr. Bailiff. Please be seated.
Okay, good morning, everyone. We're going back on the record on case CR 22-211624, State of Idaho v. Lori Noreen Vallow. The court would note the parties are present, including the prosecutors as well as the defendant and both defense attorneys. The state is continuing with its case in chief at this time. The court would also note the jurors are all present and accounted for, and I believe they have each signed their juror affirmation for the day. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. All right. Thank you, Mr. Bailiff. Thank you again for your continued service and for continuing to follow the court's admonishment. I believe I don't have my microphone working. Okay. That's better. Thank you. All right. Again, thank you to the jurors for your continued service in this case and for continuing to comply with the admonishment each day as you go home. All are in attendance, so the state is continuing to present its case in chief, and I believe has another witness to call this morning. Is the state ready to proceed with their next witness? Yes, Your Honor. The state will be calling Audrey Baratero. Okay. Okay. Before we get started with testimony, let me just inquire of the witness now that you've been sworn. Ms. Baratero, have you in any way heard or read any of the trial testimony in this case? No. Okay. As you make your responses to any questions here as you testify, please talk right into that microphone. Please make verbal responses to any questions so we keep a clear record and avoid speaking at the same time as any of the attorneys questioning you. With that in mind, then, Ms. Rawlings, if you'd like to inquire, you may. Thank you, Your Honor. Good morning, Audrey. Good morning. Would you please state your name and spell your last name for the record? My name is Audrey Baratero, A-U-D-R-E-Y, B-A-R-A-T-T-I-E-R-O. And what city and state do you reside in? Gallatin, Missouri. Okay. Have you heard the name Lori Vallow? Yes. How do you know Lori Vallow? She was a friend. And how did you first meet her? I attended a conference, well, the end of a conference in November 2018, and her home was offered as a place where people could stay. So that conference, I think you said, was approximately when? November 2018. Okay. And you stayed in her home during the conference? At the end of the conference, yes. Do you recall who else stayed at Lori's house? I think Zulema, Melanie Gibb, and there was others, and Chad Daybell was there. Okay. Do you recall where Chad Daybell slept while he was at the residence? He slept on the other side of the home. Okay. Were you able to observe Lori and Chad together during that time? Yes and no. I observed that every once in a while they looked at each other or there was like just a, I don't know, kind of a vibe. A vibe. So your observations with how they interacted, can you expound a little bit more on that vibe? Did they seem flirtatious? Did they seem like they knew each other? Did they seem? They didn't seem flirtatious, but it seemed like maybe they knew each other a little bit or something. Okay. And were you aware if they had met previously? I think that they met in St. George. Okay. 
Uh, when did you next have contact with Lori? I believe in February, so about three months later or, okay. or so, and um, Chad asked me to be her friend. Okay, so I was going to ask you how that occurred. Can you just explain a little bit how Chad asked you? He asked me to be her friend okay. um, and that she needed a friend, and I said, okay. Did he say why she needed a friend? He said that he couldn't talk to her all the time and that maybe I could be someone to, like, uplift her or, you know, be a friend. Okay. And you mentioned this occurred in February. Would have that have been the February of the next year? Yes, 2019. Okay. And when you talked with Chad, how were you talking with Chad? I was talking with him on the phone. Okay. So he asked you this over the phone about Yes. It. Okay. And how, odd, how often would you say that you talked with Lori on the phone after that? Usually it was every few weeks, but there was times that it was every couple weeks or a week, but for the most part every few weeks. Did you get to know each other over the phone? Somewhat. We talked about more so spiritual things, um, not as much things going on in personal life stuff. And when did you next see Lori in person? In the summertime. Okay. Of okay. 2019. Same. Summertime in 2019. Um, what kind of event were you attending at that time? There was a event that was scriptural based and uh, somewhere in Utah, um, Utah Valley. And uh, I went to that. And I just want to back up a little bit. Um, I think you said that uh, Chad asked you to be Lori's friend because he couldn't talk to her all the time. Do you know what that meant? My impression was that he was trying to keep propriety um, because he was married. Okay. And this conference that you saw Lori at next, you said it was in the summertime. Where was that conference held? I'm sorry, can you say that again? Where The conference that you attended in the summertime, mm -hmm. where was it held? It was held in Utah somewhere in the Salt Lake Valley. Okay. And where were you living at the time of that conference in the summer? Do you remember what month it was? I don't, but I would guess that it was in June or July. Okay. And, and where were you living at that time? I was living in Utah. Okay. So you attend, you lived in Utah and you attended a conference in the same state. Is that yes. Right? Okay. Yes. And um, do you know where Lori stayed when she attended that conference? In a hotel. Okay. Uh, did you spend any time with Lori? Yes. Do you recall who else uh, visited with her and you? Um, Zulema was there. And Melanie Gibb, and there was some other women that I didn't know. And what did Lori talk about at that time? I don't remember what was talked about, um, but at the end of being there, um, she brought up wanting to work on her husband at the time. Okay. And do you know who her husband at the time was? Charles. At some point, did you go back to her hotel room? Yes, that's where she brought it up. Okay. So when you say that she wanted to work on her husband, Charles, what does that mean? Um, well, um, do you want me to back up a little bit? And sure. So at some time close to that time, um, when I had seen her again after not seeing her for a long time, she all of a sudden, out of the blue, brought up, all of this stuff about zombies and people being possessed is kind of the idea of that. And um, I hadn't heard of that before and had no basis for that. And that's why she brought that up in the 
hotel room because that was something she was doing herself. Okay. So let's just break that down a little bit to make okay. it a little more clear. <laughs> so you mentioned that sometime before this she was talking about zombies and people being possessed. Yes. How was she talking to you about that? On the phone. Okay. I hadn't talked to her in like three weeks. And all of a sudden she brought up all of this things she had learned and it came out of the middle of nowhere um, and then she asked my thoughts about it and I said I didn't have a basis for it and that it made me feel uncomfortable but she was basically alluding to people the term I guess that eventually she called it was zombies and that it was people being possessed or having a spirit like connected to them or something. Okay. And was the spirit good or bad or light bad. or dark? It was supposed to be bad. Okay. So you first heard about this on the phone. Mm -hmm. And then when you were at the conference in the summer, she brought it up again? She brought it up again, yes, in the, in the hotel, hotel when uh, the women were there. Okay. And so when you're at the hotel and you're talking about this, what else happened in the hotel room? Um, people were just like kind of chatting and, I, I, you know, just small talk kind of a thing. And then she brought up saying that she wanted to, like, work on trying to get a, a negative spirit out of Charles. And, um, but actually, I should say, at first, it was just like everyone started holding hands, and I didn't know what they were doing. And I thought maybe there was going to be like a group prayer or something. And so they all held hands, and I joined hands as well, thinking it was going to be a prayer. And then she started talking, um, basically to say that she was going to try to get a spirit out of Charles and each woman would say something and okay. then so what do you recall Lori saying I don't remember exact words but things like knives and fire and like weapons that you would try to use to that kind of an idea okay and when you were holding hands with this woman were you standing sitting how were you guys sitting kind of sitting in the room okay mm -hmm. um, and that was the first interaction that you had with this circle or this casting or this book. yes and I didn't know that term of castings and um, when it got to me I didn't feel comfortable and didn't say anything and then as soon as that was over, I left. Okay. Because I, I didn't want to say. Okay. <clears throat> After this uh, interaction in person with Lori, did your acquaintance, acquaintance or friendship with Lori continue? Yes, it did. How did you communicate? On the phone. Okay. And were you commu communicating with Chad Daybell during this time as well? Yes. Now, how did you meet Chad? I met him in a event in St. George. I had never heard of him before. And he was a speaker and wrote books. And someone said, oh, you should go and hear him speak. So I did. And then I bought a couple books. Okay. And do you know what Chad did for a living? He was a speaker and an author. He wrote books. Um, how many books of his have you read? Three. Okay. At some point, did you have contact with him about his books? Yes. Um, about two months after I had seen him at that time in St. George in 2018, he reached out to me on Facebook um, to open up communication. And at that time, I asked him some questions I had about his books. Okay. So... Who initiated the contact? He did. And that was on? Facebook. Facebook, okay. Um, how would you communicate with him after that? 
On the phone. On the phone. Did you continue to communicate on Facebook or was it just on the phone? Just on the phone. Okay. And what kinds of things would you talk about with Chad? Religious things. Okay. Um, And you were continuing to talk with Lori? Yes, uh, about a month and a half or so after he started a conversation and then he asked me to be friends with her. Okay. Um, Once you started talking with Lori, I think you said February 2019? Yes. What would you talk about with her? About, like, religious things or spiritual experiences. Okay. Do you recall uh, talking to Lori about her move to Rexburg? Yes. And do you know where Chad was living at the time? He was living in Rexburg. Uh, Do you recall talking to Lori in late August or September 2019 about her daughter, Tylee? Yes, there was a few times in the fall that I asked her how her daughter was doing. Uh, When I stayed at her house in November 2018, I met her daughter for a few minutes. And so in the fall of 2019, (laughs) um, I asked every once in a while, like, how is Tylee doing? Because she was at college. And towards the end of the friendship, um, when I asked her how she doing at BYU, she said that she doesn't talk to me very much these days. Okay. So I think you mentioned you had met Tylee initially at that uh, Arizona conference. Yes. Okay. Did you ever meet JJ? Yes, for about five minutes, yeah. Okay. Did you ever have the opportunity to meet Tammy Daydell? Yes, I did once. And how did that occur? Um, I happened to just be going to Idaho, and um, Tammy and Garth uh, and Chad wanted to go to dinner. And Garth is uh, one of Chad's sons. And so we went to dinner, (laughs) and I liked her very much. And do you know who Tammy was married to at the time that you met her? She was married to Chad. Did Chad ever say anything to you about Tammy? Yes. uh, During the course of the friendship, he said that he had had a near-death experience years before and that he had been told by a deceased relative that Tammy would pass away before she turned 50. Do you recall when he told you this? I would say around the end of January 2019 or in February 2019. Okay. And at some point, did he indicate to you that he felt he would get married again? Yes, he did. Did he tell you who he would marry? He didn't tell me for a while, uh, but then eventually he said Lori. Okay. And did he discuss this with you prior to Tammy's death? Yes. What were your observations regarding that? What do you mean? What did you say to him? What did you? I asked that? him if he had talked to Tammy or and or his children about it, and he indicated that he had talked to Tammy for sure, and I don't remember about the children. Okay. Now, you mentioned when you talked on the phone with Chad and Laura, you talked about religious stuff spiritual stuff. Did they talk about other spiritual or religious teachings with you? Besides what we've already kind of covered. Yes. Did they talk to you about prior lives or probations that Lori and he had? Yes. What do you remember about that? He said that he had been Methuselah and he said that he had been an apostle at the time of Jesus Christ. James. And do you recall if Lori and Chad indicated a belief that they had been married in previous lives? Yes. Do you know what names they claimed to have in that prior life? I don't remember about the time when he said he was Methuselah. I remember that she was somehow around, according to them at that time. But I remember that he said, he indicated that they'd been married at that time when he said that he was an apostle. And he said he was who? James. And do you recall who he said um, Lori was? His wife. And he said her name was Elena. Elena or Elena? Elena. Okay. 
Um, at some point, did you move away from Utah? Yes, I did. Where did you move to? I moved to Missouri. Okay. Did Lori come and visit you in Missouri? She did. She and her niece, Melanie Boudreaux, said they didn't have anything else to do and asked if they could come and see the church historical sites in Missouri. They had never seen them. Okay. Do you remember when that was? October 2019. Do you remember if it was the first part of October or uh, later? The first part. Okay. And you mentioned that Melanie, her niece, was with her. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Was anyone else with her? No. Did you ever see Tylee with her in Missouri? I did not. Um, you mentioned that the reason for their visit was to see some of the church sites. Yes, they said that they had some free time and wanted to go see the church sites. They'd never seen them before. Um, did you visit with them at that time? I did. Where did you guys visit? We went to a place called Adam and Diamond and um, to the temple, and uh, they went to Liberty Jail. Okay. <clears throat> At some point, did you also go back to their hotel room? I did. Did you stay there with them? I did stay there one night, yes. Okay. Now I want to talk to you a little bit more about this experience that you had in the conference in the summer in the hotel room. Mm -hmm. That was, I think, the first time you'd heard about this idea of zombies and people being possessed. Is that right? Yes. And... Um, do you remember when you first heard Lori use the term zombie? I don't, but it would have been in the summertime. Okay. And do you know what it meant when she was explaining this, if someone was a zombie? Yes. Um, the idea was that the person was possessed and that there was a spirit in them that needed to be taken out. Did you ever discuss with Lori or Chad whether someone was light or dark? Yes. Um, what did Ch that mean? Chad, um, Chad had this idea that, I guess, like he would say if someone was light or dark, depending on if like they were predominantly a good person or if he predominantly thought that they were a negative person. Okay. Did... You discussed with Lori people that she believed were dark or were zombies. Yes. And who were those people? She said her husband Charles was. And then um, later at the end of the friendship, she said that her children were. Anyone else? And Tammy. Okay. Yes. And so her children, can you just give me their names again? Tylee and JJ. So these included Charles, Tylee, JJ, and Tammy, is yes. that right? Was there anyone else that she, she talked about being dark? Uh, yes. Um, Melanie Boudreau, one or two of her children. Okay. Now I'm going to go back to when you visited with her and Lori at the hotel room in Missouri. Um, what happened there? They invited me to stay in their hotel room instead of driving back to my house, which was a distance away. And um, it was going great. And then um, basically she brought up the idea of working on Tammy. Okay. And again, when you say working on, what did you guys do? She said that Tammy had... Um, a spirit that was in her and needed to be taken out and I told her I did not want to help and that I did not want to participate and she Okay, if you need to get some water. She highly pressured me, saying, you're supposed to be my friend, you're supposed to help me. Like, Chad asked you to be my friend. And I reiterated that I didn't want to. And she kept on. 
and this was later in the night. And I didn't know, I, I didn't do those things in my own life. And I said that I would say a prayer. And basically, I said a prayer to Heavenly Father saying, okay, I don't know what's going on. If there is something going on with Tammy and it needs to be taken out, I ask for thee to help her. And for thine angels to help her. And I ask that she would be able to feel the love of God. And I did the prayer. And were you holding hands with Lori and Melanie during this no. circle? No. Okay. Um, do you remember what other people were doing besides you during this circle? They were standing or sitting. Okay. Did Lori say anything about what needed to happen to this spirit that was in Tammy? <sighs> that it needed to be out. Okay. At that time, I had never heard it before. It was, again, at the end of the friendship because I dissolve the friendship, but basically at that time, Chad brought up an idea that, according to him, that if the spirit was in someone's body, that they were somehow being held prisoner, and like an idea of a cage or something, okay. like jail. And so the first time you participated in something like this was in the summertime in Utah, is that right? Yes. And then, and who was that for? That was for Charles. And do you recall when Charles died? I was traveling in Europe for about a month, and uh, that was in July. So it would have been July 2019. Okay. And um, after doing this other work in Missouri on Tammy, um, do you recall ever hearing Lori express frustration or have an explanation for why someone might have remained dark or why they were doing this multiple times? Yes, she, it's like if it didn't work, at least to me, it seemed like if it didn't work, it's like came, like she came up with a new idea, like it didn't work because of this. Or um, it just seemed like it was like, oh, it's because of this, and then, oh, there's this other thing, and then, oh, and that, oh, it was another spirit that got in. And, and it just seemed like it, I, I don't know, <laughs> would just keep going and going and going. Okay. Do you recall receiving a text from Lori saying something along the lines of, well, we did a lot of work today, we got her out, but a new one got in? We're still working on it. Audrey, any ideas you have would be greatly appreciated. I didn't remember, but I, I do know, yes. Do you know what that was referencing? I believe it would have been re referencing Tammy and the idea that she was saying there were spirits that kept, like, like I mentioned a minute ago, like, oh, it didn't work. So she, then she would say, oh, another one got in. And, with what they were doing. <laughs> yeah. Um, why would Lori have been asking you for ideas or guidance? I, I don't know. Did you have any special knowledge or insight? No. When Lori and Melanie visited in you, you in Missouri, did you do any other work other than on Tammy? No. And where did Lori say Tammy's spirit was? She was saying that she was in a cage or a jail or something like this. And it was the idea of, like, she needs to be freed and held because some person's overtaken her body. Okay. And so she wasn't in her body anymore. Sorry. According to them. According to Lori. And do you know what would happen if this dark spirit was pushed out? At the end of the friendship, when I heard Chad Daybell say, something to the effect of, 
why is the body still alive or something like that? Okay. I realized that they must have a different idea. Okay. Even further. Even further. And what did that mean? That they didn't want, that they didn't intend for the person to be helped, I would think. Um, and that they didn't want the person to live. And after you visited with Lori and Melanie in Missouri, did you take a trip later in October? Yes. Where did you go? To Hawaii. And do you recall about when that was? Toward the latter end of October 2019. Okay. Do you recall who picked you up at the airport? Melanie and Lori. And where did you stay? In a hotel. Who was at the hotel with you? Lori and Melanie. What do you recall about your stay in Hawaii? It was very uncomfortable. Um, basically, they invited me saying that Melanie was going through a hard time and that she needed a friend. And I said, I could be a friend. And when I got there, shortly after getting there, Lori told me that Tammy had passed away, and I didn't know. I asked her when, and she said I'd been about a week. <laughs> I asked her, how did she pass away? And she said in her sleep. Okay. Um, do you recall what, el what there are other kinds of things you were doing in Hawaii while you were there? We went on a bike ride and most of the time spent time at the beach. Okay. And what did you observe about Lori's behavior while you were in Hawaii? She was seemed agitated and snippy toward Melanie and just different emotions. Um, other times she would like swing and be um, like happy and but overall it, uh, her behavior seemed different I had not seen her behavior like that I hadn't seen her much in person but she had been nice and very I don't know you, but in, at that time she seemed agitated or, like I said, snippy. Okay. Um, and now when Chad had asked you to be friends with her because he couldn't talk to her all the time, uh, did you notice anything about her behavior that was related to, to Chad? Um, there was times that she would get phone calls and she would leave and go talk and be gone for a long time. And I would just be sitting with Melanie, trying to keep her company. And um, times when she was happy, it was, seemed like she was thinking about him or I think had talked to him on the phone. Okay. And did you personally talk to Chad while you were in Hawaii? Yes. And you mentioned that you heard about Tammy's death while you were there. Yes. And you heard that from Lori. Yes. When did Lori leave Hawaii? She left Hawaii on Wednesday. I had said that I was going to go home. I didn't tell them this, but I didn't feel comfortable. And I was going to go home. And when I said that I was going to go home, um, they said, but you just got here. 
and then Lori said that she was going to leave, and Melanie said that she wasn't ready to go home yet, um, but that she didn't want to be alone. So when Lori said that she was going to be leaving, then I said, well, I could stay with Melanie so she won't be alone. And so did Lori leave before you and Melanie did? She did. Okay. And do you know if that was planned? My impression is that the ticket was bought like the same day. Okay. Do you know where she left, uh, where she went when she left Hawaii? She said she was going back to Idaho. Okay. When did you leave Hawaii? On Sunday, that week. Okay. And where did you decide to go when you left? Again, I wanted to ideally go home, but I didn't want Melanie to be alone because she was going through a hard time. So I told her that I would fly with her there. And when you say there? Sorry, Idaho. Okay. And because I was going there so that she wasn't alone, that I would pay my condolences in person to Garth. Because I... <laughs> I knew that he'd been very close to his mom. And then also to pay my condolences to Chad. And so that's why you decided to visit Idaho? Yes. Where did you stay while you were in Idaho? In Lori's condo. And when you were there, did you observe Lori and Chad together? I did. How did they act towards each other? Very romantic. Did they physically touch each other? Yes. What did you observe? They were kissing and hugging. And was that just in the residence or was there anywhere else that you observed this? I observed it in the residence. Okay. And do you recall who else was in Lori's residence in Rexburg when you stayed there? Melanie stayed in one of the rooms. Okay. Yes. Was there anyone else there? No. Did you see Chad in the residence? At times, yes. Okay. Do you know if he slept in the residence? Sometimes he came back later at night, and so I didn't see him come back. But other times I did, and yes, he did stay. Okay. And while you were in Rexburg, did you go anywhere? Yes, we went to the temple. Okay. Who was with you when you went to the Rexburg temple? Chad and Lori. And Melanie. Your Honor, may I have just one moment? Yes. Your Honor, I don't have any questions at this time. All right. Thank you, Ms. Rawlings. Thank you. Who will be conducting cross? All right, Mr. Archibald. If I take this right, uh, you spent time with Lori and Chad in five different states, uh, Utah, Arizona, Missouri, Hawaii, and Idaho. Is that right? Yes. And you met them through uh, conferences or, or religious seminars. Is that right? Yes. And, and what religion are you? A member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Okay. And what, uh, what were these conferences uh, that you were going to? 
They were about like scriptures and about last day's events and. And how old are you? I'm 34. Are you single or married? I'm single. Okay. And what do you do for a living? I work work remotely for customer service. Okay. And uh, so you'd go to these seminars to, uh, were they called preparing a people seminars? Mm -hmm. Is that a yes? Yes. And uh, it, preparing a people for what? For like the millennium talked about in scriptures. For the end of the world? Mm -hmm. Yes. And the end of the world uh, seminars was something that you were interested in? I was interested in learning about that subject. And is that when you uh, were introduced to Chad Daybell and, and started to buy his books? Yes. And these books that you bought from him, uh, were they about the end of the world? Yeah, they were like fictional accounts of like people who would be like living fictional type. And did Chad tell you, yes, they're fictional books, but they're actually true? He said they were fictional, but that they were based on some of the ideas in them were based on spiritual experiences or impressions that he or other people had had. And he had, Chad had talked to you about his near-death experiences, is that right? Yes, yes. And that he had uh, been to the other side, had seen that, and now he's back here writing books about it. Is that what he had told you? I don't know if he wrote a book about his near-death experience, but he was writing books. Okay. And the end of the world, is that something that's going to be happy or sad? Well, the scriptures talk about it being both. Okay. And so preparing a people is, is about preparing for a happy event or a terrible event? A happy event. So what's the, what's the point? Why do you need to prepare for a happy event? Objection, relevance, and argumentative. Overruled. Go ahead. Oh, what was the question? What's the point of preparing to be happy when Jesus comes again? What's the point of that? To be with God and to be with your family and to live among people who want to be with God. Okay. So is there, so what do you need to do to prepare for a happy event? Be living the commandments and the gospel, doing the best you can. Okay. So that's the point of these seminars or conferences that you would go to is how to be happy uh, if Jesus comes again. Is that yes. Right? All right. And so uh, spending time with Chad and Lori, uh, did you also meet Alex Cox? I met him once at the end of the friendship. And where did you meet Alex? In Idaho. Did you ever meet him in Utah? No. In Arizona? No. In Missouri? No. In Hawaii? No. Okay. Did you ever meet uh, Charles Vallow? Once. And, and what did you think of him? It was for a few minutes, and he seemed nice or uh, pleasant at that time. Do you remember when that was? November 2018. Uh he look look to you like anyone who had a demon or possessed anything like that. No, not when I met him. And so, uh, when you you did this first 
prayer group or casting in Utah, uh, I think that was, you said, summer of 2019? Yes. And so the, the uh, and you had read in the scriptures about castings or uh, getting rid of demons or evil spirits. You'd read about that in, in the Bible? Not particularly, but yes, it's in the Bible. Yeah. Doesn't Jesus cast out evil spirits? Yes. So that's in the New Testament? Yes. And so you are familiar with that concept of, of Jesus casting out evil spirits, right? Yes. So in the, these prayer groups, when, uh, when you and your friends were saying, let's cast out an evil spirit, uh, you had never been part of a, a prayer circle that had done that. No. And uh, was it unusual to you? It was very sudden and unusual, yes. Okay. Because you weren't uh, like Jesus in the New Testament. He'd see an evil spirit and he'd cast it out. And that's what you were familiar with, right? Yes. So in this situation, some ladies were meeting in a hotel room and asking Jesus to cast out an evil spirit uh, somewhere else, right? I don't know that they were asking Jesus to. Who are you praying to? Your Honor, I'm going to object. This is misstating uh, the witness's testimony. Um, I've all overruled that. I think it goes directly into what uh, direct testimony discussed. So, Who were you praying to if it wasn't Jesus? When... At that other time when I said a prayer, I said a prayer. The method that they were using didn't seem like a prayer. Okay. So were they calling upon Father in Heaven? No. Were they calling upon the devil? Not specifically, but the words that were used were like aggressive things. And so this is your very first time that you spent with these ladies in a hotel room in Utah in 2019 and Charles Vallow was still alive, right? Yes. And they're saying things and you don't think it sounds like prayers to Jesus. You think it sounds like something else. I didn't know what it was. But it wasn't like a prayer, like. And so were you worried for Charles Vallow at that time? I didn't know what to think. Did you call the police? No. So did you call uh, church headquarters? No. So you just thought, these are ladies, they're being kind of weird? Is that what you thought? Is that a yes? Yes. And so, if you thought they were a bunch of weirdos, then you'd never want to hang out with them again, right? Yes, but I thought it was just, I didn't know what to think of it, and that I didn't know about it, and it wasn't my thing personally. So did you say, hey ladies, this is stupid, let's not do this? No, I just removed myself. I left right after. But yet you kept getting together with these ladies, right? No, I did not know Zulema and Melanie Gibb very well. So you met them after this, t first time, you met them again in Arizona, right? Yes, but I was not in communication with them. And your communication was mostly with Chad, right? Yes. So Chad was the source of all of your information about castings, about evil spirits, is that right? I felt 
first remember hearing about zombies and that languaging from Lori. And where did Lori say she got it from? Chad, right? I, I'm trying to remember. I don't remember when I, for sure. Okay. And so uh, these, these spiritual experiences that you were, their spiritual talks you were having with Chad, uh, were, did you ever at any time think, he's a, he's a weirdo, he's leading me astray? At the end of the friendship, I, there was questions in my mind. So at the end of the friendship, you're talking about November of 2019. October. October of 2019. Yes. So in the summer of 2019, you were still a, f a fan of his, a follower. Is that fair to say? I thought that he had information and was doing good things, yes, at that time. And you, you went to his seminars, you went to his conferences, you bought his books, you messaged him on Facebook, you called him uh, on the telephone, and you texted with him, right? He contacted me on Facebook, but yes, the rest. So you thought, this is some um, spiritual leader, uh, I need to follow him. Is that right? At that time, I thought that he was someone who could help understand. And because you were following him, is it safe to say that other ladies wanted to follow him too? That could be the case. Like Lori Vallow? Yes. Like Melanie Gibb? Yes. Like Zulema Pastinas. Yes. <clears throat> so when uh, so when Chad told you about prior probations and prior lives, uh, what did you think of that doctrine? I wondered if there could be something to it. And he said that he had been Methuselah. Is that right? Yes. And who is that? He lived in the Old Testament and uh, was a prophet. Though Chad Daybell told you, in a prior life of mine, I was a prophet named Methuselah in the Old Testament. He told you that. Yes. And you believed him. Yes. And in another prior life, Chad Daybell told you, I have been, I was an apostle of Jesus Christ. He told you that. Yes. And you believed him. Yes. So how many, so that's two prior lives. Did he tell you how many prior lives he had? I don't remember how many he said. Multiple. Yes. Many. Is that right? Yes. Over thousands of years. Yes. Over millions of years. Yes. Over billions of years? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Long time. That, that he was regenerating as all these great people. Right? Yes. Did he ever say, yeah, one of my prior lives, I was a loser in the 1700s. Ever say anything like that? No. Yeah. All of his prior lives, he was someone great, someone cool, right? Yes. Yeah. And, uh, and he said, he told you that uh, his, his name was James, and he was a friend of Jesus, right? Yes. 
<laughs> was he the, the brother of Jesus named James or a friend? I think it was the brother. Okay. And that Lori had been, when, in one of her prior lives, she had been Elena, and she had been married to James in a prior life. Is that right? Yes. And Chad and Lori, in their prior life, uh, Chad told you that uh, that they were friends with Jesus and walked in Palestine with Jesus. Is yes. That right? And Chad, Dave L. told you that you were married to Jesus. Objection, Your Honor, relevance and beyond the scope. Overruled. Yes, so, he did. And so what was your name being married to Jesus? He said Joanna. Joanna? So when Chad Daybell told you that in a previous life your name was Joanna and you had been married to Jesus, what did you think of that? At the time I thought it could be true because I trusted him. You thought it could be true uh, because it sounded cool, huh? Is that a yes? Yes. It sounded amazing, right? Yes. <laughs> I mean, that's pretty cool, being married to Jesus. Uh, you thought that was pretty cool, right? Objection asked and answered. Sustained. So, in your thought process, were you thinking, this Chad Daybell guy is, is correct. He's, he's really predicting the past. He can probably predict the future, too. Is that what you were thinking about him? Objection argumentative. Overruled. You can answer. Can you ask the question again, please? That was kind of a wordy question. So you thought Chad Daybell is telling me about my past. He can probably predict the future, too. Yeah. Because he was writing books about the end of the world. He was telling people who they were in prior lives, great people, not not losers. And, and that gave you a feeling of, I'm somebody, right? Yes. Uh, why did you move to Missouri? As a matter of prayer, I just personally felt to. Is that uh, because... Jesus is supposed to come to Missouri? It wasn't for that reason. I was just praying and following the Spirit for my life. Do you believe that Jesus, when he comes to earth again, is going to come to Missouri? Objection. Her beliefs are irrelevant. That's sustained. You don't need to answer that question. Did Chad tell you that? That Jesus is going to come to Missouri? That is a belief of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. That Jesus is going to come to Missouri when he comes back to earth. He's not going to come to Jerusalem. He's going to come to Missouri. That's what Chad told you, and that's what you believe. Objection again. Her beliefs are irrelevant. Sustained. Uh, don't answer that question. Now, when you talk about going to Missouri to see church historical sites, what, what do you mean by that? Um, like places that the pioneers had been in Missouri. And the pioneers, you're talking about who? The pioneers of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Those are people who lived in the 1840s? Yes. Uh, they were uh, kicked out of the state of Missouri, is that right? Yes. Objection, Your Honor, those are facts not in evidence. Sustain. So which church historical sites did you visit? 
um, Adam on Diamond and uh, they went to Liberty Jail and I don't know if they went to any others. So what does Adam on Diamond mean? Um, it means a place where Adam lived. Adam, as in Adam and Eve of yes. Old Testament. He lived in Missouri in uh, a place called Adam on Diamond. Yes. All right. And then you went to, you say, <clears throat> you went to the temple in Missouri with Lori and Melanie Pedro. Uh, which temple is that? The Kansas City Temple. Okay. And then you went to Liberty Jail. What are you talking about when you say that? Uh, Liberty Jail is a place where Joseph Smith was in jail. And, and why is that significant? <laughs> Objection, Your Honor, relevance. Well, it came up indirect, so I'll overrule that for now, but it does need to go towards a relevant point, Mr. Archibald. You said you went there with for a church historical site, that's a place where Joseph Smith was in jail uh, while being punished by the people in Missouri. Is that right? Yes. All right. And then in October of 2019, when you're in, in Missouri, uh, you, you were with them when they did another casting. This time not with Charles, but with Tammy, right? Yes. And, it, and so this casting in this hotel room, you and two other ladies, uh, what do you do? You, you, you say you prayed to Jesus. Uh, what, was there other prayers to Jesus to get rid of evil spirits in Tammy? I guess I don't know what you mean. Um, I said a prayer to Heavenly Father ask, and saying that I didn't know what was going on or if there was something. Okay. But that he would help. You wanted to help Tammy? Yes. And you, you believed that saying a prayer to Heavenly Father uh, would help Tammy get rid of her evil spirit? That if there was something going on that God knew, and asking for him to help if there was something. Okay. And... Uh, and so, uh, uh, were you and Lori and Melanie holding hands similar to what you did in the Utah hotel for Charles? No, I don't think so. Okay. Now, sometime during this summer of 2019, you also heard the term zombies. Uh, had you ever heard that before other than in uh, scary movies? No. Uh, and did that term come from Chad Daybell? I don't know who it came from. At the time, it seemed like it came from her. Okay. And did Lori say, this is something that Chad has taught? I don't remember her saying that. And how about the light or the dark scale? Uh, had you heard of that before? No. And is that something that came from Chad Daybell? Yes. <laughs> and that was his way of predicting uh, if you're if you're good or if you're bad. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Is that also a way of predicting if you're gonna uh, live or die? No. Okay. It was just good or bad. Yes. And what what was your score? I don't remember. <laughs> uh, was it a good score? Uh, 
Yes, look like good. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, Chad Daybell said you have a good score. Yes. Uh, but you don't remember the number, but you remember thinking, "Oh, that's good." Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. So all of these times that you were <clears throat> doing castings for Charles and then Tammy, did you ever think someone is in danger, I better call the cops? No, um, not until at the end when, when I dissolved the friendship and I felt like I could be in danger. So you dissolved the friendship when? When I like when I left Idaho. Okay. So you'd been to Utah with them, Arizona, Missouri, Hawaii. Uh, during those four states, hanging out on the beach, going to seminars, you didn't feel like this is weird. You were okay with it. Hanging out on the beach? Didn't you guys go to the beach in Hawaii? Yes. Um, I didn't think that was weird, hanging out at the beach. Well, yeah. They were friends. You were, you were having friends, fun with your friends on the beach in Hawaii, right? Yes, but it was uncomfortable because they were talking all the time about zombies and about Melanie's kids. And so uh, you felt so uncomfortable around them after Hawaii that instead of going home to Missouri, you went to Idaho with them. I wanted to go home to Missouri. But they made you buy a ticket to Idaho instead of Missouri. No. Okay. But I have a big heart. And I didn't want Melanie to be alone because she said she was going through a hard time. Because you were a friend. You were a friend of Melanie Bedreau, right? I had only met her briefly before that. Like, the first time I met her was when she came to Missouri. But as I said, yeah. I have a big heart and try to help those around me. Yeah. Do, uh, you, and that's what a friend does, is you, you wanted to help your friends, right? Until I didn't think they were friends. Yeah. And, uh, that's why you went to the Rexburg temple in Idaho uh, with Chad and Lori and Melanie. It's because they were your friends, right? They asked me if I wanted to go anywhere, and I said I wanted to go to the temple. And the temple is a place where you can worship God. Yes. And be with your friends. To serve others. Yeah. And that's why you went to the temple with them, right? The temple is a place of peace. Yeah. And so uh, when you went to the temple uh, with Chad and Lori and Melanie, uh, that could have been why they went to the temple too, right? It could have been. Yeah. All right. Thank you. All right, that'll conclude the cross-examination then. Ms. Rawlings, would you like to conduct redirect? Yes, briefly, Your Honor. Audrey, you want to clarify some things. Um, I think counsel asked you if you were in five states with Chad and Lori. Chad wasn't with you in Hawaii, right? That's correct. And he wasn't there in Missouri? No, he was not. Okay. And so when you were participating in these castings or these circles or however we want to describe them, 
who whose hotel rooms were they taking place in? Theirs. And when you say theirs? Lori's. So it was Lori's. Yes. And she was the one who talked to you about that, right? Yes. And she's the one who told you the person that the casting needed to be done on, right? Yes. She organized it? Yes. She picked the target? Yes. Now, um, the one on Charles in Utah, I think I asked you if you heard that he died later. Is that right? Yes. He was killed. Yes. And then uh, there was one a con a ta casting conducted on Tammy, right? Yes. And then she died. Yes. Okay. And I think... Um, well, I mean, they were working on their own doing those things. Yeah. I think um, defense counsel kind of asked you about this friendship and, and why you terminated it, it, terminated it, and you said um, that you were scared, scared or in fear. Why was that? Because of a conversation. And who was the conversation with? Lori. Did she make threats to you? She did. What did she say? What threats did she make to you? Your Honor, I think this is outside. She threatened to kill me. I'd object. Hold on just a minute. It uh, came up on cross-examination, so it's within the scope of cross and proper redirect. Uh, Ms. Rollins, you can re-ask the question. What, what's the time and place of this conversation? And I think, Audrey, you indicated this was when you when defense counsel asked you why you ended the friendship, and that was in what month? In October 2019. Okay. Yes, I had already made plans to leave because I prayed about it. And it felt like I needed to leave and end the friendship. And I was leaving early the next morning. And Lori and I were the only ones in the hall, in her place at the time. And I told her that I was going to go upstairs and pack my bag and just go to bed early because I didn't want to spend more time with her. And as I went to go and do that, I asked her the question, is there anything weird going on that I don't know about? And she said, no, what do you mean? And I said, I don't know anything. And she said, no. So I took her to word because I'm a trusting person. And she, as soon as I turned to start to go up the stairs, she started laughing, the kind of laugh as if you're laughing at someone or thinks something's hilarious. And she said to me, you're so naive and too trusting. You're like a little child. You'll believe anything anyone would tell you. She said, you think the world is all unicorns and rainbows. You go around helping people and serving them. Well, I've got news for you. Not everyone's a good person. And not everyone can afford to be so nice and kind. And then she said that she... So I want to just focus on what threats she made to you. She threatened to kill me. Okay. Did she say how? Yes. She said, she said, 
said she would cut me up. And something about that she wasn't in the mental place to do that, but that she would get herself in that place to be able to do it. But that she didn't want to have to because it would be so messy and there would be so, so much blood. And the, the bleach and something about trash bags. And that, she, and that she would bury me worse. She would, where no one would ever find me. I don't think I have any other questions, Your Honor. Thank you. All right, Ms. Rawlings. <laughs> you may, Mr. Archibald. So this uh, diabolical conversation that you're having with Lori in October of 2019, was this... Uh, in Idaho? Yes. You, you'd been with her previously in October of 2019 in Missouri, right? Yes. You'd been with Lori previously in October of 2019 in Hawaii, right? Yes. And then you'd been, then you've followed Lori from Hawaii to Idaho in October of 2019, right? Yes. And then uh, you decide it's time to go home to Missouri. I'm sorry. I didn't follow her. I did not follow Lori. Okay. Uh, you just happened to go from one state where you were vacationing with her to her place where she lived. But you, you're saying that's not Objection follow. Objection argumentative. That's sustained. So this conversation in Idaho is before you go to the temple or after you go to the temple? After. And um, so you're saying she starts laughing and talks about unicorns and rainbows and that she would cut me up and put me in trash bags. So, yeah, she mentioned trash bags. Uh, why? Objection calls for speculation. Overruled. Did she ever say, I killed my kids and I'm going to kill you too? Objection beyond the scope. Overruled. No, I knew nothing about her children. Right. She Did she say, I killed Charles and I'll kill you too? She didn't talk about Charles. Nothing like that, right? She brought up being at the scene, watching someone take their last breaths. And you have previously testified under oath, swearing an oath that you'll tell the truth. You have previously testified at a grand jury hearing. Do you remember that? Yes. Do you remember taking an oath to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Do you remember that? Yes. And do you remember your testimony that you did not say anything like this? I was scared. And she had said that if you ever tell anyone, I'll come and find you in the dark of night. So you now want the jury to believe that even though you previously testified under oath and nothing of this sort was talked about, that you come here today and say you are so scared, that's why you didn't previously testify Ob about it. Objection, Your Honor. Argumentative. It's overruled. What was your question? You want the jury to believe that you did just didn't make this last crap up. I did not make it up. But you acknowledge that you did not say this when you previously testified in support of probable cause, right? Yes, Chad okay. and Lori. Thank you. Your Honor, can I just ask one follow-up question? Uh, no, Ms. Rawlings, that's uh, been through a 
redirect and recross. And so that will conclude the testimony of this particular witness. <coughs> All right, we're going to take our mid-morning recess at this point.